shame on you for flirting with my husband. I, I honestly have never had any problems with haters. Um, maniakis, if you know what that is, <laughs> yes. I say, uh, can I have a night with you? How much are you? Y you would think that it's easy for a celebrity or probably someone like me to find a guy and date around. Maganda umaga, chicharon, okay lang, salamat po. I'm like, what are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Monica with Jessica, Camille, and Gia, and you're watching Key Talk. This woman hasn't stopped working since she was like 17 and has impressive list of achievements. I can't even, you know, I can't even say all of it, but she's a corporate, a TV host, inspirational speaker, actress, dancer, fashion designer, choreographer, social media influencer, model, fitness advocate, and a businesswoman. And guess what? She had time to give birth. <laughs> <laughs> like, ladies, please welcome the ravishing Regine Tolentino. Thank you so much, girls. Wow, thank you very much for that um, long introduction. We are so excited to have you today. Um, and it's really special for us as well because Jessica here, she's a fitness coach. Monica, she's a dance diva. Gia is a fashion designer. Her clothes have been worn by, by prominent celebrities here in the US. And I actually, I used to dance professionally for the Golden State Warriors. That was wow. my first job in the fifth or sixth grade. I was paid and I, that feels like so long ago. But now that you know a little bit about us, we want to know more about you. Right, what yeah. Your advice to aspiring designers. For those of you guys who want to get into the fashion this industry, like, you know what? It's great. It is glamorous, definitely. It's so much fun, but it's really hard physical work and if you're not good with customers if you're not going to be there to listen to them and to you know be courageous enough to invest more or to try new things it might not be the best <laughs> business for you but definitely if you love what you do then as they say you know you never work a day in your life so i'm i'm, I'm okay with that and um thank god it's been there forever 21 years <laughs> I, I always I like the the term charge it to experience because I've had many a client that uh, um, has given me headaches and um, you know doing doing it is, is not easy at all you mentioned you had a client who had a, who gave you a lot of headache no I mean it's like you know you have clients who like in the Philippines they call it tawad or they'll keep asking for a discount and discount and discount I'm like what the heck is this like a freaking palenque where you can just like do that so it's hard because they you know of course there's value to the design to everything and you know I just I it's, it's quite challenging to deal with that I love how fashion always after it leaves it always comes back in and right. one of those styles right now is probably the crop top I would say from the 90s yeah did you have any fashion disasters in the 90s regime yeah, well, like now that I see 90s stuff coming back, like I used to wear like the jeans up to the knees that you roll up. And then when I look at it now, people, some people are wearing it. I just find it so hideous. Or like <laughs> beach pants, MC Hammer pants, or like, I mean, I, I did all of those trends, the side ponytails, the big hair here, the bangs that fly up. And yeah, I mean, uh, don't get me wrong. I had super fun. I had a great time uh, in my years there in California. Um, during the 90s and then some of it here in the Philippines all of these trends are coming back and it's so cute I think it's super funny like the hoodies and the the branded shirts and the fanny packs or those beach bags or whatever you call them bum bags and so it, it cracks me up I love it but like I don't know because I've like been there and done that like uh, it's not really my thing anymore but yeah I appreciate it it's just so funny how fashion comes back all of the accomplishments that you've done um, throughout all of your years in the industry, I mean, I'm sure you've come across some haters along the way. How have you dealt with them? My stature, whatever you call it, in social media or as a celebrity is pretty neutral. Like, I'm not really like, um, you know, I don't have like 
strong opinions about government or fashion or people. So I, I honestly have never had any problems with haters. Um, Maniakis, if you know what that is, <laughs> yes. But other than that, um, people have been pretty good to me. Um, and so if you're asking about the Maniakis or I guess in English, what do you call that? Um, Perverts, yeah. <laughs> but I have my daughters who are also adults now to to filter that out. I also have a, a social media team who filters all that out. What do you mean? They send you pictures? What? Everything. Like they'll say, um, "Can I have a night with you? How much are you?" Or like, um, "I love your this. I want to do this to you." Or you know, just just everything and anything you can imagine. A lot of um, sick people, not just there. There's a lot here too, and um, yeah, I mean it's funny. I just, I just laugh about it. Do you have any de- indecent proposals? Yeah, I mean when you're a celebrity, you, you know people, especially on social media, it's so easy to uh, to say things because it's not like you're in front of the person. So like people would send it through Facebook or Instagram to whatever, and just you know, it like happens like, every day. What's the yeah. worst? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I try not to get into it, but like Rain, what would be the worst uh, <laughs> decent proposals, or because she's the one who manages it? No, but they have like really um, foul language. So those are the things that, that I really hate because they'll put it like on my feed. Unsolicited pictures. Unsolicited pictures. Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, I don't get a chance to even get to them because they're already the ones who are deleting it and blocking it. You don't even look like you had a baby. You're so oh. beautiful. Oh, you're okay. kid, and you're running the successful business. I mean, that can be really intimidating <laughs> for any man. And when you started out in showbiz, you were named Crush Nung Bayan. How would, how would a man woo you? I mean, you oh. mentioned you have a partner. Did he do anything yeah. special to grab your attention? I, I, I met him on the set of this fitness show that I used to do. It's called Go Get Fit. And so he was like uh, my director for a day. And so, yeah, he's just really nice. And I guess um, maybe because he's persistent and he has like, he had the nerve to talk to me like um y- you would think that it's easy for a celebrity or probably someone like me to find a guy and date around and you know just just have a lot of suitors or something but it really isn't the case like i after i separated with my my husband like i i did not even know where to begin if you can imagine i was wait how old is that 35 36 and like I didn't know where to begin, like how to date. And like, I was so freaked out because my kids were still young and like, I didn't want to scare them. And I didn't think I was ready. So like, I honestly did not have any suitors. I did not go on any dates until a year and a half after when I met him. So until now, um, he's like my second relationship my whole life. And wow. And and I'm really blessed. When you said persistent, does it mean dinners every night, flowers here? What did you do exactly? Um, yeah, things like that. I mean, he was really good to my kids. He would give them like gifts or do thoughtful things and offer to drive and this and that. With me, like he would text really sweet things like, oh, have you eaten? Can I bring you something for lunch? Or um, he'd offer, like he helped me, he helped me sell my car. <laughs> you know, he just helped me do like some errands that I couldn't do because if you can imagine, it was just me and my daughters and so it was just three girls in the house and we didn't know how to do like those guy things like you have a broken faucet or like how to hook up cable or stuff like that so he was just like our like knight in shining armor who who just stepped in at the right time pretend you just woke up and it's the year 1995 would you do anything differently um yes i would um i married at a very young age um so if i could tell myself uh my younger self to like hold off enjoy life travel more work less i would do that but i have no regrets because i have two amazing older daughters who are full support they're beautiful smart and sweet and um, they're just really good people so i wouldn't change if if that would be affected but yeah when i tell my kids i'm like hey enjoy life travel (laughs) Go date around. Don't be like me and just like date one person and like that's he's it forever. Yeah, I, I'm sure you guys have seen uh, Frozen, right? Yeah, uh, you know how Anna meets the guy and she thinks like, oh, that's it, love is an open door. That was like <laughs> me before. 
<laughs> and so <laughs> you, you think that like this is it and it's forever already, but yeah, you need time to like really get to know someone. And I, I learned that a little bit late in life, but thank God um, I'm still here and um, I've had a blessed life, so I can't complain. Just to share, like when I was like when I got separated and so my girls and it was just me and the girls and I was thinking about dating again. I wanted to do a show with other single women to talk about, hey, how do you, where do you meet guys these days? Like, you know? <laughs> so, well, yeah, that didn't, that didn't <laughs> materialize. But yeah, I, I wanted to do a show like this. So props to you guys that you have this thing going on. And um, yeah, I wish you guys all the best. It's amazing. Oh, thank you. I just have a question. Because during that time, when you were 35, I don't know if Tinder or Match.com was available. No, yeah. You would you consider? No, dude, I am scared. I would never do that because, like, I don't want to be caught like doing stuff online or like talking to some guy and he might screenshot our conversation or something and send it to other people or post it. I'm so terrified for any type of news like that because I, I endorse like some family products and stuff, so I just don't want to be involved and so I stay away from anything like that. And um, just to I, I have a story so. You know, people, I have, okay, if you look up Regina Dolandino on Facebook, there's probably like how many? Probably like 20, 30, 40 different Regina Dolandinos. And so yeah. apparently I had an imposter who would befriend other celebrities or other people that I work with and pretend to be me. And, and then they would also converse in English because I know they know I, I'm Inglesera. And so sometimes when I run into celebrities at taping, so they'd be like, hey, Reg. How are you doing? When are we going to have coffee? And I'm like, why are we going to have coffee? And he's like, yeah, I just talked to you this morning. And I'm like, I never talked to you this morning. What are you talking about? <laughs> so things like that. I also have like um, one girl that I worked with. I did a Zumba event. I did a Zumba event with, right? She sends me this long message. So Reg, shame on you for flirting with my husband. We have five kids. And how can you do this to me? I thought we were friends and this and that. I'm like, what are you talking about? <laughs> So she sends me like a screenshot of like five pages of like all these interaction with her husband, which her husband like interacted with the so-called me, right? And so, um, yeah, it was awful because I, I mean, of course she understood and she, she, she was embarrassed, but like, I can't believe people will actually do that. Um, so since I worked with her at an event, her husband was also there. Apparently there was a group shot. And so like the conversation would be like, Hey, I forget the guy's name. Um, let's say it's Joe. Uh, hey, Joe, um, I'm so happy to see you. You're so hot. I loved how your hands were on my body when we took that picture. It was stuff like that. <laughs> it's like, what the? <laughs> so, yeah, things like that. It happens. And so I just talked about it. But like, yeah, there's just some stuff you can't control for sure. Come here. Hold on. Someone wants to say hi, guys. Oh, this is Rosie. Hi, Rosie. Hi, Rosie. Yeah. Oh, baby. Did you design those clothes? Um, not this one, but if you check my Instagram, you'll see our OOTDs where I make matching that. outfits yeah. for us. <laughs> no, it's so point. much fun to dress up and like. Rosie, like you can put the biggest bow on her head and she won't move. She knows that she has oh, to rock it and slay and pose. <laughs> you grew up in California, but right. your Tagalog, Regine. <laughs> no, I, 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 I didn't speak Tagalog. Actually, I, I spoke Kapampangan. That is a dialect in Pampanga because both my parents are Kapampangan. So I didn't know Tagalog because I know I knew that dialect. So when I first moved here, like I was so bolol. The only thing I knew how to say is like, Magandang umaga and like, Salamat po. And I used to have the worst accent. I don't even know how I got into showbiz because like, I really did not belong here. I didn't know anything about the culture. I, I, went, I went to classes. I had a Tagalog course coach from Ateneo and I would have classes with him several times a week. I learned by having a, a, a Pinoy partner before and working with Pinoy staff at my boutique, I'd really have to level up and learn and and I also had a live show that I had to speak pure Tagalog so I had no choice but to learn and to get it right. You ever have to audition in Tagalog? I auditioned for MTV Asia so to do like to be a VJ right so they're like okay can you VJ so English hey guys what's up blah 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 got it cool. Can you do it in Tagalog? 
Yeah, sure. So like my Tagalog really sucked at the time. So I would just say anything and everything in Tagalog because the people who were doing the audition were not Filipino. So I just be like, and my dad was with me because I was I was like 17 at the time. I'd be like, Maganda umaga, chicharon, okay lang, salamat po. Just magandang gabi. Like just said everything and anything in Tagalog. The only words that I knew. And then I'm like, ingat, okay lang, yeah, whatever, God bless, whatever. So like, like and then my and then they're like good job so i even had an applause and then i'm like thank you and then my dad goes to me after after getting after the audition he's like what did you say did you do you even realize you didn't make any sense and i'm like i know right can you believe i actually was able to do it without making any sense <laughs> and so yeah um and you got the job <laughs> yeah i got the job it's time for our we talk fast talk so we okay. mention words in alphabetical order, and you respond in three seconds. First word that comes to your mind. A for ambitiosa. Uh, Regine. B for b <laughs> uh, Regine, joke. <laughs> B for cheap. Cheap, divisoria. D, drama queen. Uh, my baby. <laughs> Equality. Equality. Black Lives Matter. <laughs> F for, for fake. For fake? Yeah. Fake news. G, gold digger. Money. I don't know. <laughs> H, hater. I was going to say Cardi B. Hater. Ava Levine. Doesn't she have a song like that? I don't know. Individuality. Individuality. Um, Rain. My eldest daughter. J for jealousy. Bitter. K for KSP or Kulang Sapansin? My dog, my cat. <laughs> Loshang, L for Loshang. Uh, not me. <laughs> M for Maldita. Maldita, my mom. <laughs> N for Nasty. Nasty, um, Savage. <laughs> o for Old. Old, um, old school. P for Perfect. Perfect. My baby. Uh, uh, can you just finish the rest? Mm -hmm. Okay, go for it. Q for queen. Rosie, my daughter, she's our queen right now. R for rich. My family. Mentally, we are rich, abundant. S for <laughs> Wow. Um, oh. Who's this? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Just think of whatever. Uh, team for is team tough. Team. Like it's making me sweat. Okay, <laughs> team for what? Why the feeder will go down? <laughs> team for yeah. too fat. Ah, too fat. Uh, yeah, me. <laughs> two months ago. <laughs> User. User. Uh, friendly. User friendly. <laughs> v for vain. Vain. Wow. Um. I'm not vain. <laughs> um. <laughs> Um, I should be more vain. Oh. How about that? W, that w, weaker sex. Weaker sex. Uh, men. <laughs> X for X factor. I'd say Rosie. She's got it. Just like what? mommy. Why for young? <laughs> for young. Um, me. I feel young. <laughs> Even though I'm not anymore. <laughs> Z for zesty. Or lively. Zesty, um, my attitude. Yeah. Regine, you're super down to earth. It's no wonder how easy it seems to have been for you to be so successful and get along with everybody that you work with and in your business and just everything with showbiz. So I hope our viewers learned a little something about you and uh, being your own boss. You're so inspirational. So give us and Regine Talentino some love in the comment section below. Yay, thank you guys. Yeah, please follow me on my Facebook, Instagram, even my YouTube. So for Instagram, it's at Regine Tolentino. Or if you want to check out our, our business, it's Regine Tolentino Atelier. And my dance studio is RT Studios PH. So you can uh, um, check me out on those sites. And yeah, I hope to see you guys when you come here to Manila. Thank you so much, Regine. You are so amazing. We hope you enjoyed this episode with the ravishing Regine Tolentino. And we leave you with this quote from Atticus. 
She wasn't looking for a knight. She was looking for a sword. You go, girl. Thanks for watching.